So we're here at Easter Quarthys Stone Circle in Aberdeenshire. Um, it's an amazing site. It's one of the most popular ones in the entire country, in fact. And it's got the classic recumbent stone that you can see behind me with the two great flankers either side of it, kind of resembling the horns of a bull. Now it's that direction, the southwest, where there is a great hill behind it, which we're going to have a look at from above with the drone shortly. Um, but also it's believed that along that piece of rock, the, the great recumbent stone, the flat surface, created like a false horizon. And the flankers helped create a complete frame for the stone, um, you know, so the, the light of the moon and the sun and other stars could be seen through it and observations could be made. Behind me is the great recumbent stone and you can see that it's made of like pink quartz and it's got white streaks of quartz running all the way through it and all the other stones in the whole circle are all different types of quartz pink black kind of different shades that gives this remarkable and kind of stunning effect especially when the light hits it at certain times of day and the moon hits it at certain times of night. And so you get this really strange effect. And I, I bet this was part of the purpose, the energetic purpose of this site. It's also worth remembering that all over Aberdeenshire, we have hundreds of the stone spheres have been discovered here. Just around Aberdeenshire alone, a majority of them, probably two or 300 have been found. We've seen some in Orkney. We've seen ones discovered down in Bridlington near the Gypsy Race and the Rudston Monolith. Uh, we've even seen three in Aberdeen itself at the museum there. They have more apparently in their storage. Hopefully we're gonna see some more. But were they really associated with these stone circles? It certainly seems so. Even though they weren't found directly in stone circles, they were found in the fields around them. This really intrigues me because if that's the case, why were they placing them in the fields? What was their purpose? You know, we know that you can fit them in your hand pretty perfectly, smaller than a tennis ball with brilliant geometry on some of them, lesser geometry on others, but still very intriguing nonetheless. And they are believed to date to the Neolithic era and encode sophisticated spherical geometry. So here we have the pink granite recumbent stone, and you can see the lines of quartz moving all the way through it. It's very, very noticeable when you get a bit of light on it. And this, this one down here as well, we have strips of quartz. I'm sure this was chosen for good reason. It wasn't just a random choice. I'm also intrigued as to where the quarry are. We have these gray flankers on either side, mixed with the pink quartz, with the white streaks. It really is quite intriguing. And then you have the pink stone over there, just the other side of that flanker. It just gets stranger <laughs> the more you look around here, the more the light is now coming out. So the stone circle has 11 stones all the way around it, and you can see those here. And then it has one recumbent, so 12 in total, which is the classic number we find all over Cornwall. And the interesting thing about these sites in Aberdeenshire is that there's over 150 recorded stone circles. And that's, the, that's the, the richest area in the whole of Britain, more so than Cornwall, more so than Cumbria. And um, even though this one's been reconstructed and the bank's been put up with a small wall around it, it's still a really fine example of a classic recumbent stone circle here in Aberdeenshire.